Right, we're going to have a go today at upgrading the steering wheel on our project Range Rover Sport. It's still a bit of a mess, but we fixed the audio system and we're getting all a bit excited. So we're going to fit a new steering wheel. So we've got a standard steering wheel here, which you can see. Um, this one's already started to show some signs of wear. A customer sent this one back and um, exchanged it for one of our other ones. So you can see if I put the two next to each other, the... the the ones we sell have got a reprofiled grip, so you've got a sportier grip section going on here. You've got this sort of Nappa perforated leather. We've got carbon fibre inlay here. Now, interestingly, the SVR Range Rover Sport had this bit here was in carbon, but not the full sort of bottom section here and this top section along the top. So we're going to have a go at swapping this over now. We got Dan helping us today, and Dan's not done a steering wheel before, so it's going to be quite a good test to see if a sort of DIY person can do this. So, if you look under here, you want to whip that over, Dan. So, underneath the steering wheel, I'll show you here because it's going to be easier than on the car. You've got this little sort of slick covertly under the steering wheel, and what you've got to do is you've got to push this. So, this is just a cut off steering wheel. Uh, cut off screwdriver here and we've just literally blunted the end and what you've got to do is stick that in there and if you put that flat on the table we can see what that does is that comes up and what we're going to try and do is catch that spring there and push that up like so and that will release the hook here and then we can flip the airbag unit off so that's what we're going to do that's what it looks like because it probably won't make much sense in the car right First thing to do, safety first, we've got to disconnect the battery. Now I've done a full video on how to disconnect the battery and I'll put the link there for you to do that. But basically you've got to take your boot carpet out on that. And then there's a little, yep, yeah, it's not a lot. You'll find the battery connector in here. It's a bit dark, but we'll get that done. And then leave the car 10 minutes so that all the power discharges out the airbag system. So we'll do that and I'll see you in a minute and we'll be sat in the front. Okay, so we're sat in the car now. Um, we got the seats out, so we got actually, it's a bit of a better view. So right then, Dan, do you want to have a rummage under there and see if you can find, find that little slot under there? Now, you can tell if your airbag's been taken off because let's just have a quick look at that one there, actually, if I can. Would you want to hold the light, Dan? Yeah. All right, let me have a look. So you can see it, if I can get it right, you can see it here. Uh, and you can see that it hasn't been off before, which is a good sign because those who've been watching know my project car's had a hard life. So it's quite interesting to have a look on your car and see whether your slit has been sort of violated there. So, right, you want to have a go ramming that. And then that's it, you'll, so you'll, that's it, you'll puncture it and actually take it out now just so that we can see. So, yeah, what if you're screwed, if you you can tell if your bag's been off because you can see now. You can see that that's been done as it were. So right, so let me have the light. So you have a rummage up in there, Dan, and see if you can work, you'll feel the spring. So you need to go in fairly straight. So this is quite a good test. And you'll feel, there you go. So that's pushed off and released that bottom one. Now careful, obviously there's wires connecting that, but see if you can rock those top two pins out. I can't remember exactly the technique for getting those. You may have to, that's it push it up just push it up yeah right so careful so you can flip it out now and you can see then that we've got the wires connecting it now one thing to note is the routing of the cable so can you just point out there dan you've got the it's um is it in a clip at the top there is yes there any yeah there's a little black clip. can you rotate that airbag gently so we can see the clip so that we can get it all back in the top there is a clip at the top there isn't there Let's have a look. Yeah, do you want to grab a light? So let's just have a look where they. So we've got some clip clipping that on there. They come down into there. So we could. Oh, can we just? Can we just disconnect that plug there? We'll have a. We'll have a quick look and we'll work that out. It looks a bit different. I and mean, we. You've got two choices. You can disconnect the plugs on the back of the airbag, which are relatively straightforward. Actually, we'll get the little screwdriver and do it that way. I think. Okay, so we're going to have a go. We're going to get those airbag connectors off first. So in the middle of those airbag connectors, you've got those orange parts. So we've got to gently move those orange parts back, but you've got to sort of 
work it one side and the other. So have a go at that, Dan. You want to get your fingernails in there, but they're quite hard with your fingernails. They're, you know, you've got to get some sort of leverage in there. But you're trying to hold the airbag with your other hand. Does that make a bit of a click? That's, that's going a bit now, isn't it? Yeah, maybe try it from that end. That'll... That's it, that's coming. You get it in there. You break your nails. That's it. Right, so that, and then you should be able to pull that off then once you've got that middle bit out. Pull the, pull on the main connector body now. Yep, so that's off. Now notice that the connector body's blue and the inside of the airbag where it plugs in is blue. A lovely shade of mint blue there. Right, um, now the other one should be coloured a different colour, should be yellow, so have a go at that other one. Right, that's come out and then pull that and there you go see how that's I don't know if I can get that in the camera yet so you've got yellow and blue plugs and yellow and blue bits on the airbag so you can't get that wrong right then we've just got to unhook those wires it's important to get those back um, when you there's a little there you go so that just unhooked out of that little hook there and that's that down right then we've got a second connector at the bottom here now that's held in by a little metal clip so yeah push that little metal clip that and then push that back and that and that releases the, the connector there. And then that's just the question, have you got enough hands to give that a good pull apart now? So you just have to, there's no special way you've got to pull that apart. All right, let's just have a look at those two bits of plug. Yeah, okay. And that's the airbag. So don't let the kids play with the airbag. Um, put that out of the way, put that gently on the back seat there because that is an explosive device. So do be careful with that. Right, um, so what have we got now then? So we're looking all good. We've got a couple of connectors at the top we've got to undo now um, before we undo that centre bolt. So um, let's have a go at that red connector there with the red and blue. Now I can't see any release on that one. Um, so I think that might be a similar thing where you just need to give it a good pull. I can't see her. I did have a look. Well, we might have to have a second investigate. All right, we'll have a little investigate on that. Right, so I think we've worked it out. So yes, you want to give that top red one. We can't see a release. It looks like you just give it a fierce pull there. I can't see any release or trick mechanism. You just need to give him a sharp pull. Right, now the next thin one, there's a little tab on the top. Can you see the little tab at the top there, Dan? Yeah. And then if you pull that out, and we, we'll have to show people that. Can, can you spin the connector around? And then there's a little tab, so emulate pressing that little bit at the top. And there, if you press that, that releases that, and that one comes out. Now that should be all we need to do. Um, those wires will free back through. So we'll go and get a, move that wire, let's have a look what we've we got there, a big, a big Torx fitting on the middle there. Um, so we'll go and get the Torx fitting, and we'll let you know what that is. I think it's a Torx T50, and we'll have a go at undoing the, undoing the nut and getting that off. Right, we've got a Torx T50 bit and we're going to have a go at undoing the steering wheel. So we've got the steering locks clicked in, so that'll react some of the force. So have a go with that down, see if you can. There you go, that wasn't, that wasn't too bad, was it? Either that or you're incredibly strong, Dan. You're probably getting by hand now, can you? Right, now... We'll have a look, but I'm pretty sure that this is on a hexagonal spline, not a... Uh, the older steering wheels had them on like a, a load of splines and you have to be careful to get it on the right way. So you have to look what angle your steering wheel's at because you need to put it back on that way. So it's sort of pointing up at the sort of two o'clock position, isn't it? But when you've got that nut out, let's have a look. I think it's on a hexagonal spline. Yeah, so you can see in there it's on a hexagonal spline. So you're not going to... On the old steam, you have to make sure you got it on exactly the same angle you took it off at. But you're not going to get it that far out with that one. As long as you remember what angle you've, you've taken it out of. So give that a wiggle, Dan. But be careful, because when it comes off the spline, you've got to feed those wires through the hole. All right? That's it. All right, now pull it gently. All right, and then you've got to feed those wires back through 
You got it. Feed those airbags. Right, so have a go at removing that off the spline now. And then feed those airbag wires through there gently. Not damaging them. Right, and there we go. So that's the steering wheel off now. So we're going to have a look at that on the bench because we've got to swap the switch packs over and the chrome trim over. And that's the clock spring. Now, can you just demonstrate the clock spring, how it turns there? Those Right, but don't turn it. Um, don't go spinning that round and round because it only goes sort of four ways clockwise and four ways anti-clockwise. So leave it roughly where it was. And obviously when you put it back on, you've got to make sure those gray pegs there line up with the holes in the back of the steering. Let's have a look at the back. And it's got to line up with those. You point those out. Oh, yeah. Line up with those. So when you get it back on, make sure you line that up. And don't play with that clock spring there. Right. So let's go out back to the table and have a go at swapping the bits over on the steering wheel. Right. So we've got the steering wheel out. And what we've got to take off it is we've got to take this chrome trim. Because your new steering may or may not have that chrome trim. But it's interesting to know how to do it. And we've got to take off the switch packs. And also the paddle shift. So if you just flip it over so we can see the back of the paddle shifts there Dan so yeah at the moment we've got the back paddle shifts but we're going to have a little bit of an upgrade while we're here and we're going to go to these silver paddle shifts which is quite an easy upgrade and we'll do another video on the different types of paddle shifts and how to swap the paddle shifts because you don't have to remove the steering wheel to do the paddle shifts so they're quite an easy upgrade but we'll do that we'll, we'll otherwise we'll make this video too long so right do you want to whip that little chrome trim out there Dan so these chrome trims are literally, there's no fixings, they're just sort of jammed in. So if you work it out from the, work it out, work it from the bottom, and you can sort of get under there, and it's just jammed in the rubber. And if you have a look, it's got these little ledges here, and it goes round the side, and this little ledge on the top here, and that just digs into the, the rubber in the side of the steering wheel. So that's quite easy. Right, you want to flip that steering wheel over and then remove those paddle shifts. So on the back here, you've got some little torque screws in here. I think it's a Teox T15, but don't hold me to it, because it's not written. So you've got a little screw. Let's have a, we always like to look at the little screws down. So when we're putting it back together, we know what they're. So that's a little, not sort of quite a coarse thread little screw, that one. Yep. And yeah, go on, might as well whip the other one out while we're there. Now, we should better then pull the paddle shifts out, but there'll be a connector on it. So start with this one, come on, little... right, and then just have a little look. Right. And then I think there's a little bit you've got to press on there, I'm not sure, at the back. Can you see that? Yeah. You might have. There's a little press bit there, yeah. So if we can have a look at that, yeah, there's a little bit there you've got to, all right. And that releases that one. Do the same on the other one. Yep. Right, so that's the paddle shifts off. Now, when you've got the paddle shifts off, that exposes another screw in here. Now, is that the same size? Or will it fit for now? It'll fit. Yeah. Now, I think it's a different sort of screw. We'll have a look. Because these are coarse threaded screws, but these, these ones are actually proper threaded screws. These have got a much finer thread and much longer. So when you put it back together, make sure you get... So these nice threaded ones hold the switch packs on so do the other one as well now these switch packs they've got this big sort of what am i call this sort of flanged end bit here this big and it jams in can you see that there down that big so what they they sort of flip it over and they they're sort of jammed in so you have to fight them off um they're just gripped by the rubber so just give it go on give it a fight that's it. Right, yep, yeah, so you got that, yep. Yeah. And you can leave the loom on for now and then fight that other one off. So you're not, they're just really rammed in and that sort of bell end thing grips into the rubber. Right, and then you've got to, so work out where the, so you, you've got to pull your connectors through, careful where they come through your paddle shift connectors. They're, you've got to sort of get the connector at the right angle to get it through the hole there. Yeah, that's him. Hey, are we good on that one? And then the main loom tucks in the back, the top here. So just have a quick look before you take it out, how that dress is in. And have a go then at just, that again should just be resting in there. And then you can take the whole switch pack assembly out. 
We've got everything there. Ah, right, hold on, there's some more. Right, now one thing to note, right, we've got a, we've got a connector there. Now we can push that out from the rear. And we've also got the heating plug here and the heating module here. Now it all nests in. So get that blue connector, the heating, that blue connector there. Can you get that out first? And that should just be a, an unplug. There's no clips on that. Once you've got it out, you should just be able to pull that apart. Yep, well done. And then, right, what else have we got? And then the module under here, it, again, he's just jammed in there. Oh, if I can get the, let me get it around this way. So I see if you can just wiggle that module out there, grab it by the wires, and he's just sort of in a little pocket there in the rubber. It should be just jammed in. Yep. Okay, so that's that jammed in. Right, the last one we need to do now, I reckon if you flip the steering wheel over, that clear cable tie there, rather than cutting it, I think if you look from the back, you'll see where it comes through the, the casting. Where can we see it? Just it's just in there. And I think if you ram that exactly, he's already on it. And I think, right, get that, you're on there at the moment. All right, if you do that then, give that a tap with your, with your wrist, I reckon that will fire that through. Is that having it? No. Nope. No. Go on, let me have a go. You have the camera. No, I'm going to shame you now. Publicly <laughs> shame you. Editing it out. Right, we've put it on the floor. We're going to fight him out. There we go. Right. So, there we go. So, there's the steering wheel. And there is a... Uh, so, that is the steering wheel fully stripped down now. There's nothing on that. These, just for information, they're the wires that are going into the the heating that for the heated steering wheel. If you haven't got a heated steering wheel, you won't have that connector and that little control box there that controls the heated steering wheel. So that's that. We then need to build that up on to this steering wheel. Now this steering wheel's already come with the, the chrome insert, so we're fine there. Now, one thing I wanted to show you was that some of the latest steering wheels have different switch packs. Um, you can see how cool they are, and these are all backlit. But we haven't worked out how to fit these yet. Um, if you look, the connectors are actually got wires in different locations. Can you see that? Um, black, black, red. No, they haven't. They're the same, aren't they? We could try plugging those in. Now, on the L405, the... so we might, we might try that. We'll do that in another video, though, see if we can upgrade that. But for now, we'll just put the, the, same, the same switch packs back on. Right, so we'll get on and do that. I don't think we need to video that. Um, it's a question of the same as reverse. We're gonna push those in, dress that in, put the heating module in, connect the heated steering wheel, and go from there. So we've got the steering wheel all built up, and they always look a lot better when they're all built up. So you can see that now. We've got the carbon fiber, we've got the chrome insert in, we've got our perforated leather and our new grip around there. We've got all the wiring tucked in, we've got the heated connector, we push that cable tie back in. That's all ready to go back in. Now, just as a little teaser, I wouldn't believe what has literally just turned up, and that's one of these latest new steering wheels. So this is the Alcantara soft touch, sort of furry, suede leather one off the new Range Rover with the the chrome rim. And these are the it's got the new backlit um switch packs on it. So We'll have a little play. We'll, we'll do in this video, we'll just get this one on, and then we'll do another video, see if we can get these chrome switch packs. The other thing you'll notice about this steering wheel is it's got these alloy billet paddle shifts, which are really nice. So these are actually machined from aluminium. They're really nice. But that's we'll do the paddle shift video another time. Right, so now we've got to get this one back on. So do you want to grab that down? and go around the other side and let's see if we can get this back on the car. So here we go, back inside the car. So we've obviously got to make sure we line up our clock spring there. Um, so you've got to feed those wires through for the, the airbag. And then you've got to line those two pegs up, haven't you? And when you line those pegs up, it should line that central connector up so it's on at the sort of two o'clock position yeah they see those gray pegs have come through that looks all right doesn't it mm -hmm. yeah well, there's your there's your bolt and get okay. 
I mean, you want that reasonably tight. I don't know the exact torque setting for it, but I'd lean on it a little bit. You don't want it coming off. Do. Right, we're all happy with that. Right, so now we can plug those those wires in. Um, yeah, so that one should be lying there, ready, and it should click in. That's it. Cool. There's that little wire in there. That one. Yeah, that's it. You got it. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's the red wire. So what wires have we got left now then? So we've got those. Now when we so we've got to grab the airbag. Now what's that other one? Yeah, they okay. both go on there. Yeah. So we've got the the airbag connector and the sort of horn connector. So if we grab that airbag out the back. Now what what order do we do we take them off in? I right now that the two way one must be the first one, won't it? Yeah. You can work out where. Are you gonna go for those, eh? That might be easy to get. How much length you got on that one there? You're gonna better off trying to get that one on. Obviously we can't see a lot because he's the other side of the airbag, but I'll flip that round. Is that one going on all right? Yep. And is there any routing for that? Okay, it goes under that metal clip. Should we do that now or later? What do you reckon? Uh, do it now. Do it now. I just wonder if it gives ourselves more room to move, but yeah. All right, and then have a go at those airbag ones. So I think you want to push on the body, not on that middle connector, and then get the body and then push the orange connector home. They go in, yeah, that's all right. And they're colour coded, so. All right, and you've got to route that cable into that little hook, haven't you? Do you remember it went in that little oh, hook yeah. there? So I guess it's where that bit of tape is. That tape is there to. And that should stop it getting in the way as we put it all back together. I don't think it needs to be ultra as long as that's yep. there. Then all it'll do is stop all the wires getting caught as you put the airbag back in. Right then. So I reckon put the top in first. I reckon try and get that top one, those top ones in first if you can. Because that's the way it came out on it. It might all just fire straight in. It's fighting us a little bit, is it? Mm. We haven't got any, anything in the way of those sort of spears, have we? No cables in the way. That's it. There you go. Yep, so it just clicks in place. So there we go. That's the Range Rover Sport steering wheel upgrade finished. So one thing we might not have pointed out earlier is the red stitch in there, which is quite nice. So we'll, we'll get those for sale on the website. Um, and we'll just check that all works before we mess about and do some more videos with the switch packs and stuff. So there we go. Good luck with that.